Have you ever seen the Miss Congeniality movie where that um, pageant model was asked what her fairy date is and she goes, it's April 25th because it's not too hot or not too cold, you just need a light jacket. That's today. And I feel so hot in this. I might change in about five minutes because I'm so hot. Like, we're in the middle of autumn at the moment. We're about to head into winter. We're a month away from heading into winter. And it's stinking hot outside. Like, we should be freezing cold. And it is so hot. All I need is a light jacket right now, I swear. I'm going to have to change. I'm melting. Anyway, welcome back to the Saddle Club Series 3, Episode 3. Whew. Well, you won't wait anymore and jump straight into it. Let's see what happens. Is Carol going to leave? Is she going to stay? I just don't know. The suspense is killing me. I've got it. What? What if Carol's auntie can't take her? Then she'll have to stay with us. But it's all arranged. So? Let's unarrange it. How? I mean, the only way you're going to do that is by calling her father and pretending to be the Aunt Penny. To which I don't think you sound anything like her. You don't know what she sounds like, what she looks like. You, you can't really impersonate and call this off. So I don't know how you plan to do that. But we'll find out how she, they do later on. Ready? Really? You know, I had an email from Aunt Penny. They had an email from the Aunt Penny. Okay, so you hacked into your her Aunt Penny's email address. Because that's the only way he would have gotten it and knew it was from her. You hacked into someone's emails. Whoever it was, you might want to tell her, or them, that impersonating a Hanson is a very serious offense. Impersonating anybody is an offense. You can go to jail for identity theft. It's not just your family because your family's important. It's anybody. You get caught doing identity theft for credit card or anything. You get sent to jail. My ETD has been moved forward. I ship out in less than 48 hours. So will you, Miss Starlight. Starlight's coming with me? We've already been through this. Her apartment doesn't take horses. Must be a boy thing. Indeed, Veronica. Speaking of which, where is my new boy? Again, how did Uncle Roy not get a phone call last night to be like, hey, your nephew kind of skipped class. Can we have a chat with you about that? How did he go... Un unaware of what happened. He would have been contacted as his legal guardian to be told, your nephew did not show up for class. Can we have a chat about this? Is something wrong? Is there anything, like, how did he escape through this clueless? I don't get it. It's negligent to not update the legal guardian that he was missing for all of the day. Well, it's done. Where is she? He's not here. She must have. It took you to go to his stable to realize that the horse wasn't there. Surely you could have seen that turn around the angle and gone, well, Stevie, you don't need to run any further. We can see Starlight is not there. Why'd you have to run to his stall? Even if a horse was lying down, you'd be able to tell if he was in there because you'd be able to see through the barring that he was lying down. I'm sorry, but you really go that extra mile. So she's just going to do what her dad wants? Let's face it, Carol's her own worst enemy. We've got to save that girl from herself. But how? She won't listen. She will if we make her. Do you plan to hold her down in chains and be like, you will listen to me? You can't force someone to do something they don't want to do. It's just a matter of life. What? We'll take Carol up to the secret place on Mountain Lake. Then we'll talk some sense into her. We have to find her first. They're entering their stable. I get that, I really do. It would make more sense to run to the tack room, get your grooming kit, your saddle, your bridle. Because you're going to get in there. You're going to look at your horse and be like, shit, I forgot everything. You're going to throw it back out again. Just run to the tack room. It makes far more sense. So what? What about behind the couch? Worth a try. We'll get you a bowl of water. And maybe some food. Hey. <laughs> maybe food if you're good. As in, we'll only feed you if you're good. <laughs> I love you, Trevor. Come on! You don't think that donkey is going to make a sound or a smell that when someone walks into the lunchroom where people go to eat food, that they're going to smell a dead rat. <laughs> no pun intended. He's going to make a noise. That's just something animals do when they see company. They, they make a noise, they make a sound, they make a smell. He's going to eventually want to poo. 
it's gonna make you want to wee it's gonna stain it's gonna smell people are gonna know he's there it's not really the best hiding spot uh we've got to go me too um don't tell anyone you've seen me we won't what they're gonna say we saw a boy like they don't even know his name like, to say we saw a boy, it could mean anything. There's heaps of boys that I'm sure they don't know the names of at this stable. Like, they don't know you. They're not gonna know that they saw- they're not gonna tell me they saw you when they don't know who they saw. If that makes sense. So are you there, mate? Again, he could smell something and he's not thinking... Something's not off. Does someone have bad deodorant in this place? They have a distinct smell, donkey, so it's quite obvious that something may not be up. And you should probably investigate because this is where people eat their food and it's very hygienic that they need to have their food in a proper place um, away from like fleas or infections. That's why horses aren't in the same eating area as where you would eat your food. What are you doing there? Do you hiding? I'm not the only one. Hey? There's something hiding over there behind that couch. Something like what? I don't know, can't you smell it too? Stevie, Lisa, where's Carol? You haven't seen her? Well, not since this morning. Where can she be? Well, you don't know, so why are you acting like you do? You don't know where she is. It would be like, mm -hmm. like you, you know something. He's a colonel, he's gonna know something's up with your facial expressions. You actually don't know where she is, so just be honest and say, you don't know. You're doing the wrong thing, Colonel Hanson. Carol should be staying with us. And he gave me the opportunity, but you two acted like two-year-olds about it. So why do you think he's going to change his mind now? If it's just going to mean you act like two-year-olds again? We just need more time to sort it out. I'm sorry, ladies. But time is something that you both don't have. Carol and I ship out in 24 hours, and Starlight needs to be transported to the base. Starlight? She didn't tell you. I just say, as you have... If you had just said you don't know where she is, you would have all been caught up to speed. Carol, you haven't spoken to Carol, you haven't seen Carol. You're guessing where she is, you don't 100% know. She's there somewhere. Carol! 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 Where are you, Carol? Well, you know, she's there somewhere, so why don't you use your magical senses and find her? Yeah, hey, you're right. She should go. How do you want to break it to her? Max has fired people before. Like, <laughs> it's not the first person he would have had to fire. Don't be a wuss about it. It's, they're acting like he's never done this before. He would have had to do it with several staff members. Of course not. Remember the time the balloons burst at the fairgrounds? I could feel his heart pounding through the saddle. How's it going to be if they fire rifles near him? Well, they train them, like, to get used to those sounds. Like, every horse, like I mentioned... I, I can understand where Carol's coming from. They they do train horses to get used to these sons, um, guns and sirens and sort of things. Um, they don't just put him on the base straight away for him to fend for himself. They, they train them to, to be like that. Um, just like every other military horse. I'm sorry, Colonel. I could not find her anywhere. Well, don't you keep track of movements in and out? Not really. Well, you should. If there was something that happened, you need to know who's in your stable. Like, for example, if there is some kind of lockdown of some kind, you need to know who's in your stable and who was there in the morning and who's no longer there. You need to know who is borrowing one of your horses or horses that live on your property. That's important to know. That's a negligent thing from Mrs. Rake. They should be keeping track of who goes away what trail they're on. So if anything is to happen, like if someone was to fall off and break themselves and there'd be no cell phone service or any cell bus, they need to get an ambulance with them. And the only way to do that is to know exactly where they are. So it's very important that Mrs. Reg is being very negligent by not keeping track of who's going where, at what time they're checking out, what time they're coming back. So if anything is to happen, they have record of where they're going and it's the writer's responsibility to be honest. So if anything is to happen to them, they know exactly where they are. At least he actually took his advice and saying he might have seen something and he's actually taking an action plan. Like he believes Simon that he actually saw something, which is nice. <laughs> I really, really 
really hope Max has a work safe claim. <laughs> oh my god, that's gonna be one big lawsuit. No. Uh, fine. Leave me alone. Have they got enough feed? Yep. And plenty of water. Good you brought what feed are they giving them? They can't just give them grass to chew on horses will need their proper nutrition food to keep going so just by feeding them grass isn't going to get them going you do have to give them the nutrients i don't know what food she's talking about you can't just give them grass and leaves they do need other forms to keep them going or your horse is not going to perform at proper level about the blankets yeah lisa wake up carol we're so mega sorry you should be the way you deserted me at JB's. You're not the only- There's only two microphones. What were they supposed to do? Only one other person could sing. You just left the chair lying there. You are just begging to for him to find your location. This red, I will be the first live-in boarder that she's ever had. Again, I don't think Mrs. Rake thought of that overnight or just in the car ride. I feel like she's had that in the back of her head for a little while because it, it's not as easy just to say, hey, come live with me at Pine Hollow. You're Starlight. And yourself. You too, Dan. Hello. I mean, like I said, it was a ballsy move to make this the second and third episode of the series, seeming they've just come back from a massive hiatus. Um... <laughs> to make Carol leaving very early on in the series. Like I said, unless you were not right up there, you would have had in your mind that, of course, Carol was going to stay. Otherwise, how would they have filled the other 23, 22 episodes? Uh, and now, let's give it up, because they're no longer breaking up, but there's a settle club. Yeah, Christy. And would you have it? Three microphones are all back. <laughs> I don't want to talk about them right now. Anyway, I'm going to have to end it here because I can't play any more due to copyright reasons. But basically, it's just about with their friendship and adventures because they're the Sutter Club, basically. And how they can do anything simply because they are the Sutter Club. That's basically the song. Um, but I can't play it because of copyright reasons. <laughs> um, so that is my episode done and dusted. If you did like this episode, please give it a big thumbs up. And also, please do subscribe for more. And I will see you next time in the next episode. Bye, guys.